Today we're going to compare the Samsung S10e versus the S20 and this is going to be my last official video with the S10e because I got to trade this in to get some trading credit for the S20. So this is the low light test of the front facing camera and one of the biggest things about or one of the biggest difference is basically the telephoto lens. So that's one thing the S10e does not have over the S20. Alright and this is how it looks like when it's really dark without any major city lights. So let's move on to the next section. All right, moving on to the portrait mode first, the biggest thing I noticed is I can actually zoom in on S20. And that goes the same with the front facing camera on S20 as well, because I can actually zoom out using live focus mode on S10e, it won't let me. Now, is it worth upgrading to to get this feature? And it depends on how you like your portrait mode pictures. One thing I do know is if I'm taking a picture in portrait mode using just a wide lens, especially a person up close, it's gonna look really weird or disoriented. So that's why I do like having the telephoto option to give a more compressed background look to actually make it look like an actual portrait picture. For HDR, I would go with the S20 because if you look at the sky, you can see the blue, whereas on the S10e, it's only white. Even for indoors, the S20 does a better job exposing the highlights, so there is a lot of improvements here. In portrait mode, you have to move around until your screen says ready, and in terms of just picking up the cutouts of objects and people, I didn't really notice if the S20 is amazingly faster than S10, so in terms of performance, it seems really similar. For everyday situations, here's what you're gonna see. Ultra wide, regular wide, 3x, 8x, and 30x. And I will say that S20 is the obvious winner because you do have the telephoto lens, so if you're zooming in, especially at 3x and then 8x, it's gonna be more clear on the S20, and with the S20, you can also zoom all the way up to 30x. And at that point, the image is not gonna look really clear or crispy, it's just something nice to have, and I don't think a lot of people would actually use the 30x. On the S10e, the max you can zoom in is 8x, so I did the same thing with the S20, and of course, as you can tell, the S20 is the winner here, so if you do like zooming in into your pictures or you find yourself zooming in a lot, you will see the upgrade when you get the new phone. In terms of HDR, I feel like they're both about the same. Sometimes the S20 seems to do better and sometimes the S10 seems to do better. So I think it's a hit or miss or it's just really random. But nonetheless, I, I feel like they're just equally about the same. In terms of color, I feel like the S20 is a little bit more saturated in the oranges, blues, and reds, just slightly, but not too overboard. I think it's just enough to where it makes your pictures look a bit more punchy, but as we all know, Samsung pictures are already saturated. Now moving on to low light, I feel like most of it is really similar. Of course, the biggest difference is telephoto. As I'm zooming in into 3x and 8x, of course, you're gonna see the S20 to be more crispy. You can see less noise in artifacts. And of course, I'll show the 30x just to let you see how it looks like in low light situations. So even in low light, if you're zooming in or use the telephoto a lot, this is a definite upgrade from the S10e. If you find yourself not zooming in and you're just using ultra wide and regular wide, I don't really think it's really worth it. One thing I do notice shooting ultra wide and low light, the images are slightly greener. Also, the billboard on the right is more visible or readable on S20, so it seems to have better control on the highlights. On the S20, I feel like it's just the little things that they're improving, not by a milestone where it's really noticeable, but you just have to look for it. Now, moving on to night mode, I would say the S20 is better in terms of brightness, but sometimes they do add a bit of the green where it kind of feels like a force and it doesn't look too good. That's more in a city situation where there's still a bunch of lights to the point where you don't really need night mode. But if you're in an area where there's basically no light at all, then this is where you see the brighter picture on the S20. And sometimes I feel like it's also a bit more clear. This is the point where I noticed just taking a regular photo on S20 is a bit slower. And if you switch to night mode, I would have to wait maybe a second or so until I see the timer on the right, the lower right, to actually know when the night mode is ready. So taking really, really low light pictures on S20, the performance is pretty slow for my taste, but I do like how there's a timer now to let me know how long I need to hold the picture for, and there is like this sort of timer animation on the shutter button. The S20 does have this new mode called the single take, so here are all the options that they gave me using that mode. And it's not only pictures, they also record video, so you're gonna see the full clip of the whole length of what we did on top of their own little spin as well. I also tried it during nighttime as well, and I realized that I didn't get as much options. I had 12 during daytime, and now I have 5 during nighttime. 
but I will do a more in-depth video of using just single take throughout my day to see if it's really useful if you're in vacation or in your touristy area. So hit subscribe if you don't want to miss that video. Now moving on to the video portion in 4K ultra wide, the stabilization seems really similar. The difference here is the colors. On S10e, everything seems to be a bit more saturated, especially in the browns. You can tell that it's really popping out and it's kind of dark as well. The S20 does have a flatter profile look and if you're looking into the shadows or darker areas, you can tell that it's easier to see. Now moving on to the main camera lens, everything I said about the ultra wide angle seems to be the same here. So without wasting more time, let's move on to the next one. On S10e, I zoomed in 3x just to match with the S20's telephoto lens, and as you can tell, the S20 is the winner. But if you really look at the background on S20, you can kind of see a little bit of that background blur, the same thing or the same concept you get with the DSLR. Next up is 4K60. The S20 does offer stabilization, so here is the biggest difference between the two. And the colors still apply, the S10e does have a bit more saturation than S20. Now we're moving on to 4K versus 8K on these phones, and I, when I first recorded 8K on S20, everything on the screen is pretty choppy, things moving around like these cars seem to skip as I'm recording, especially if I'm panning around as well. So I thought that it, wasn't, it wouldn't be that good when I'm watching it back or when I'm recording, but now that I'm looking on my computer screen, everything seems to be pretty good. It's stabilized, the colors are still pretty flat, which I do prefer. So I'm obviously gonna do a AK cinematic, so we're gonna see more samples of that. But as first impressions, I am pretty impressed. A quick test on ultra steady mode, everything seems to be similar. Nothing really has changed here from what I can see. Now moving on to low light in ultra wide is not the best to shoot at, but it seems to me that the stabilization is still the same. The white balance is much better on the S20. Everything seems to be correct and less green. But on S20, it seems like I can see more of the artifacts. If I look at the bottom of the screen, I can see the purple and green noise showing up. Now when it gets brighter, it's gone. Once I get into the darker spots, it starts to show up again, and on S10e, I don't really see much of that, it's just consistently noisy. For the main lens, everything seems about the same. Of course, the colors are slightly different, but for stabilization, the micro jitters, everything seems to be identical. For the zoom in slash telephoto lens, it seems to me that the S20 is clear and looks more natural, whereas on S10, it looks a bit more digital, but there is more noise on S20. 4K60 test, of course, you will see micro jitters on S20 because it's stabilized. So having these two side by side during nighttime is a good example of why unstabilized footage looks cleaner versus stabilized. Shooting 8K in low light is not going to be as clean. I do find myself losing focus a lot, and of course you'll see a lot of artifacts, especially if you look up in the sky. Now this isn't a big surprise to me because I already expected that it's not going to look as good in low light for 8K, so I would just stick with shooting in daylight only. So that is my comparison between the new S20 and the older S10e. So I do like having a telephoto lens, especially if I'm shooting portrait pictures. The HDR is a bit better in portrait mode and the colors, I would say it stands out a bit more. So is it worth the upgrade? That really depends on you. If you want to see more S20 content and camera comparisons, please subscribe, follow me on Instagram, give a like, hit the bell, and thanks for watching.